Hi everybody, God bless you. It's me, your friend, Minister Lillian Cobos from Smoldering Wick Ministry. It is Wednesday, February 21st of 2018. And I give thanks and praise to God because he's giving me another opportunity to come before you today to bring you a little thought on the Word of God. And I feel so privileged to be able to do these videos and to be able to share with you the Word of the Lord and share hopefully some inspiration, some encouragement to those of you in the body of Christ who may be feeling a little weak today, a little harassed. And to those of you who don't know Christ who might be listening, who need to know more about this wonderful, wonderful Savior who is extending his salvation to you today because he died on Calvary's cross for all of us to save our souls, to save us from our sin, to save us from, from, from death and from hell. So I feel very happy to be able to come to you today. I'm a little bit tired. Just got home from doing some errands outside the home. But thank God the Lord helped me. He gave me strength. And now I am coming before you to bring you a good word from the word of Almighty God. Because his word is always, always good. It always has something good, something wonderful to tell us, to strengthen us, and to help us to push on and to push forward. In this life, which can be so difficult sometimes, because let's face it, people, I think you'll all agree with me that life is hard. But life without Jesus is a hundred million times harder. Just uh, on a side note, I just remembered this, and it breaks my heart for those of you who may not know, although most of you probably do. I just found out this morning from one of my sisters that Reverend Billy Graham, one of the most beloved and most fruitful men of God of the you know of this past century who bought untold millions of souls to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ through his crusades passed away this morning at the age of 99 um, my sister tells me he died in his home in North Carolina and um, I personally feel the loss because although I never met him personally when I was a very young teenager at the age of 13, when I came to Christ, uh, I came to Christ through watching a televised Billy Graham crusade. I backslid after a time and many years later in 1995 when I rededicated my life to the Lord that was almost 23 years ago, it was through a live televised Billy Graham crusade. So Billy Graham was the agent that God used to bring me to Christ initial, initially and to bring me back to Christ 23 years ago. So Billy Graham has always been very special to me and so I feel the loss greatly even though I never met him personally. And while I'm very, very happy that he's with the Lord now which is where he wanted to be because he was very frail although thank God according to his son his mind was still sharp as a tack, his mind was still quick. But his body was very frail and he was very sickly, as you can imagine. The man was 99 years old. So while I'm happy that he's with the Lord and, and in God's presence and in the best possible place anyone could be, we needed him here. So, you know, I feel, I feel the loss and I'm sure you all do too because I don't think anyone would argue that Billy Graham was a man of God, a man who really loved God and loved souls and took very, very seriously the call of God on his life. Anyway, that said, let us get into the word. And today's portion of scripture is found in the Old Testament book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 15. And I'm only going to be reading three verses to you. It's Proverbs chapter 15, and I will be reading verse 1, verse 2, and verse 4. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Proverbs chapter 15, verses 1, 2, and 4. If you have a Bible by you, please feel free to open it up and read along with me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words, which are harsh words, harsh words stir up anger. Verse 2. The tongue of the wise useth, useth knowledge aright, but the wise, but the, I'm sorry, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. And then verse 4. A wholesome tongue, and that is translated a healing tongue, 
is a tree of life, but perverseness therein breaks the spirit. May the Lord add blessing upon blessing to his word. Father God, in the holy and mighty name of Jesus, I come before you today, Father. Thanking you and blessing you and praising you for this privilege that you give me, Father, who don't deserve it at all. This privilege you give me, Father, to be able to share the word with whosoever will listen to this video. Father, I give you praise and honor and glory. I ask that you would help me, that you would strengthen me, that you would anoint me, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would speak to the viewer through me for your glory. Hide me behind your cross, Lord, and let your name be glorified in everything always. In Jesus' name, amen. These verses from Proverbs chapter 15, in fact, I think that most, I'm sorry, I'm adjusting my, my computer. Um, I think that most verses in the book of Proverbs and in pretty much the whole Bible that deal with the tongue and how we use words have become very important to me and have acquired a life of their own. They have acquired a power in my life that I think that in, in past years, maybe even as recently as last year, didn't have quite the power or quite the impact in my heart as it did starting la from last year, early last year till now. The word of God tell us that a soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. Well, that makes a tremendous amount of sense. But if you think of it from a spiritual aspect, because clearly we all know that if someone is speaking with gentleness, with kindness, with compassion, with patience, more often than not, that will diffuse a situation and it actually can bring reconciliation and healing and resolution to whatever the problem is. But if you're speaking harsh words to someone who is already upset, or if you're speaking harsh words to someone who wasn't upset, you are certainly going to get them upset, as it says. It stirs up anger, and you create an environment and a situation that is very ungodly. And let's take it to the next step. It is not only ungodly, it is downright demonic. Because who is the author of anger and wrath and confusion and strife? The enemy, the devil, the Lord rebuke him in Jesus' name. So whenever we are prone to allowing our tongues to just speak harshness out of our own frustration, out of our own anger, our own hurt feelings, we are letting ourselves be used of the enemy in that moment. And it grieves me when I think about this because it has happened to me in the past, just as I'm sure it has happened to just about everyone who's going to be listening to this video whether it's today or some other day, that you have allowed, just like I know I have allowed, anger, hurt feelings, to dominate my reasoning when I'm getting ready to speak and end up saying horrific things that cut to the bone, cut to the very quick of the heart of the person who's hearing them or reading them, and you cause grievous, grievous damage in that person's heart, in that person's spirit, and in that person's mind. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. Verse 2 tells us, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. Now, how much more foolish, beloved, I ask you, and, and this is a rhetorical question, just ponder it. How many times in your life have you found yourself speaking, usually speaking in anger or speaking without thinking or speaking out of indignation, and you actually catch yourself and you're hearing the words that are coming out of your mouth, and the words are rolling out of your mouth, they're pouring out like Proverbs says, but your brain is saying, shut up. Why are you saying that? Shut up. Why are you saying that? You're going to regret saying that. I know it has happened to me. And I don't doubt that it has happened to you. And in that moment, when we're allowing our mouths to just pour forth foolishness and wrath and rancor and anger and sarcasm and just giving vent to hurt feelings, but not in a constructive way, 
then we are showing ourselves, and I include myself in that number because like I said, I've done it myself. We include ourselves in the number of fools. God hates a fool. God hates foolishness because foolishness does so much damage. Acting the fool, not using reasoning, not using the good sense God gave us, not allowing the Holy Spirit to take control of our emotions and let him dictate what we're going to say, is totally acting the fool. And fools can be dangerous. Now, verse 4 tells us, a whole, I love this verse because it says a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. And like I said, that word wholesome is translated healing. A healing tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein breaks the spirit. A healing tongue is a tree of life. That means that when we speak positively, when we speak with kindness, when we speak with patience, when we speak with compassion, when we speak letting the Holy Spirit lead and guide us and not letting our rancor and our hurt feelings and our rage and our anger and our emotions speak through us and letting ourselves be used of the enemy, but when we let the Holy Spirit be the one who takes control of this tongue, which is such, a dangerous member of the body when used outside of the influence of Almighty God, when it is used as a healing member, that the book of Proverbs says it is a tree of life. It brings healing. It brings restoration. It brings reconciliation. It brings comfort. It can restore. A healing word, a wholesome word, can restore. It's a tree of life. It can give life. That's amazing to me. But conversely, but perverseness, iniquity, sinfulness, therein, in your tongue, meaning in your speech, breaks the spirit. It breaks the spirit. Wow. A broken spirit is a very serious thing. When our spirit is broken, we're undone. We've come to the end of ourselves. In fact, the Word of God tells us in another place in the Bible that a broken and contrite heart, a broken and contrite spirit, the Lord will not despise. That's how, that's how to the end, having a broken spirit is, where you are completely undone. At that point, only God can lift you up. At that point, only God can heal. And that's why when there is perverseness in what we say, and it even it doesn't even really matter if it was something we said intentionally or something that flew out of our mouth in the heat of the moment that we weren't really planning to say, but it came out, it breaks the spirit of the person who is receiving it. Now that right there, that verse all by itself should give us pause. It's sure giving me pause to really and honestly and sincerely and truly do what the old adage says. Think before you speak. And I would even say we need to add to that, pray and think before you speak. Especially if you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Because the Lord uses our tongue to bring healing, to bring correction, but bringing correction in love, not in judgment and in anger. To bring healing, to bring correction, to bring comfort, to bring encouragement, to bring direction. The Lord uses our tongue, the tongue of the believer, of the person who has been washed in the blood of the Lamb and serves God, he uses our tongue, our mouth, our speech to be a blessing to others. And it doesn't matter if that person is saved or unsaved. By a word of your mouth that the Lord uses, someone could come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ with an anointed word spoken by the mouth of a person who serves the Lord. What we say, what we say 
carries eternal ramifications. It carries eternal consequences, for good or for bad. We as believers in Jesus Christ have to follow Jesus' example of how he spoke to people when he was on the earth. And yes, there were times when he rebuked and reproved, especially the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and even his own disciples when they were letting their faith get a little too shaky. But interestingly, even when he was being very direct and very, like, for lack of a better term, in your face with the Pharisees and Sadducees, interestingly, when you read the New Testament and you read the things that he says to them, if you're listening and reading in the Spirit, in the Spirit of the Lord, you see, you can still hear the compassion in it. Because, you know what? He wanted the Pharisees and Sadducees to be saved too. The Word tells us that he de doesn't desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that included the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That includes you, that includes me. So we have to follow Christ's example. Even when we have to do the unpleasant task sometimes, because sometimes the Lord calls us to do it to reprove someone, to rebuke someone, to correct someone, it always has to be done in a spirit of love. And in the spirit of compassion, understanding that we too are frail and faulty, and that not a one of us is perfect, the only perfect one is God, and then our word becomes a healing word. Even if it's a correcting word. Correction, the purpose of correction, beloved, is to heal. It's to straighten out the path. It's to straighten out the person's walk. So it's a good thing. It's a healing thing. We have to be very, very careful to not allow the enemy, the Lord rebuke him in the name of Jesus, to not allow the enemy to use our tongue and our emotions to fulfill his agenda and while because believe me I tell you from experience and from experience as recently as less than a year ago that when you give vent to hurt feelings and in the moment when it's happening more often than not because that's how it was with me in the moment when it was happening you feel totally justified in what you're saying but you're not you're really not and what I mean by that is this, even if you're feeling what you are feeling in that moment, experiencing emotionally in that moment might be justified because of something that was done to you or something that was said to you, what is never justifiable is lashing out in anger, whether in verbal or written form. In my case, it was in written form and deeply deeply wounding even people that had nothing to do with anything that was happening just like this broad brush explosion that even hurt people who had nothing to do with what was happening now that's bad that's really bad and in that moment I own it. I was acting like the book of Proverbs says, like a total fool, period. I confess it. I own it. I have asked God forgiveness for it. I have asked the people who I injured with my words forgiveness for my stupidity and foolishness. And God is restoring. God is so merciful that God is restoring these relationships little by little. And I'm so grateful to him. For what he has taught me, it was a hard learned lesson. Because I agonized for almost a year over what I had done, over what I had said. And the only one who could fix it was God. The only one who could turn it around was God. And I thank God that I am seeing, oh praise God, I am seeing little by little, little by little, the restoration is coming. Little by little, the reconciliation is coming with these parties, these, these injured parties. And I give God all the praise and all the glory. And let me tell you, 
I know many times we say, oh, I learned my lesson with that and then we repeat it. This lesson was so, this lesson just killed me so badly. I learned the lesson. I learned the lesson. And so I daily now ask the Lord to give me his divine wisdom every time I'm going to open my mouth to speak. Every time I'm going to, I even say to the Lord in prayer, regardless of what form the conversation takes, whether it's face to face, verbally, whether it's in an email, in a text, whatever, Lord, give me your divine wisdom, your divine leading, guidance and direction for every conversation that I have every single moment of every single day. Because we have got to learn to control this member. We have got to learn to control our tongue. And even more than that, we've got to learn to let the Holy Spirit put a check on our emotions. Because a lot of the perverseness and foolishness that comes out of our mouths a lot of the times is because we have given free reign to negative emotion, whether it was anger, hurt feelings, a combination of anger and hurt feelings. Think of any negative emotion you could think of that would elicit a stupid verbal tirade that would do tremendous damage. And we've got to stop doing that. We've got to stop letting our emotions and our flesh rule in those moments when we're feeling hurt and just cling to the everlasting arm of God and ask the Holy Spirit, first of all, please help me with these hurt feelings. Heal me from these hurt feelings and please Put a restraint on my tongue. Tie a knot in my tongue, Lord, so that I am not able to say anything stupid or foolish or perverse or hurtful that I am going to sorely regret later and that is going to offend you and be a sin against you besides also offending and being a sin against my sister, my brother, my neighbor, whoever it may be. We have got to learn to let the Holy Spirit put us in deep check. Let the Holy Spirit restrain us. Because God's wisdom is the only perfect wisdom that there is. Verse 2 says, The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of the fools pour out foolishness. The mouth of the of the tongue of the wise person, the person, and a wise person is a person who is letting themselves be led and guided. In every aspect of their life by the power of the Holy Spirit, including their speech. When you're letting the Lord lead you, you're using what gives what God gives you properly, correctly. Whatever thing you want to say, you are able to say it with love. You're able to say it with wisdom. Because it's the Lord. It's not your flesh. The minute that you let flesh come in, the minute that you let negative emotions come in, you're done. You're done. Because you reap what you sow. And if you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap only what the flesh can give. That's what happened with me. But if you sow to the Spirit of God, and in the Spirit of God, you're going to reap what only the Spirit of God can give, which is having your tongue be a healing tongue and having your tongue be like a tree of life that blesses and that gives strength and that when you have to correct you correct but you do it with such a spirit of gentleness and humility knowing fully that it's that you're not perfect and that it's God who is giving you this mandate to correct and always letting the Holy Spirit guide that correction so that you never 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 let personal opinion or personal feelings get in the way of what God is wanting to convey to that person. It is so important, beloved. And to those of you who don't know the Lord, this applies to you too. Because many times, especially when we're not in the Lord, we have an even bigger problem restraining our tongue and restraining our emotions. And we end up doing tremendous, tremendous damage. And sometimes that damage is irreparable, which is the most horrible thing of all. And you don't want to be in that position. I know I don't want to be in that position. I thank and praise God because I see that little by little he's restoring and fixing and healing the damage that I did. 
I'm telling you, my lesson is hard won. And I will not forget it ever again with my Savior's help. So those of you who do know the Lord, let the Holy Spirit be the one who either allows you to speak or restrains your tongue. And when you feel the Holy Spirit putting a check on your tongue, you better let him check your tongue. Because when he does that, it's because you're getting ready to say something that you are going to regret. Believe me. You will regret letting those words come out of your mouth or come out of your pen or come across your computer keyboard or whatever. You will regret it. If you don't want to live your life in regret. Mm, I'm going to read you verse 5. A fool despises his father's instruction. But he that regardeth reproof, which means he that keeps reproof is prudent prudent meaning wise he who keeps who who holds it in his heart who receives the reproof meaning the correction is prudent is wise when we don't let the holy spirit restrain our tongue when we don't let the holy spirit put that check that tie that knot in our tongue when he is Hitting us, convicting us, saying, hey, I don't want you to say that. And you know he's speaking to you and telling you, I don't want you to say that. Bite your tongue. There we are despising our Father's instruction, our Heavenly Father's instruction. Because remember, God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit is trying to restrain us and trying to put us in check so that we don't say something perverse and foolish and stupid that's going to do damage... And we're letting ourselves be used of the enemy. When we still give free reign to that and ignore what we know to be the conviction and the shut up of the Holy Spirit, we are despising our Father's instruction and we are a fool. Because that is what the verse says. A fool despises his Father's instruction. But he that keeps reproof is prudent. Let's be wise today. Beloved, let's be wise in the Lord. Let's let the Holy Spirit be the one who gives us the green light to speak. And when he gives us that red light to shut up, let us be wise enough to not despise our Father's instruction, our Heavenly Father's instruction. But to listen to him in obedience immediately and stop that tongue. Bite it if you have to. If you have to make it bleed to stop yourself from speaking, do it. You will be doing less damage that way. Then letting those words come out of your mouth, then letting those words come out of your computer keyboard, then letting those words come out of your pen. It will save you a world of hurt. And it will save those. Because more often than not, when we do it, we're doing it to people we love dearly. You will be saving those you love and esteem. You will be saving them a great deal of hurt as well. And you will also be bringing glory and honor to almighty God to the God of our salvation the God who sent his only begotten son Jesus Christ to die on Calvary's cross for our sins I hope that this word has helped you today because it's helped me and I pray in Jesus name that if there's anybody either today or in the future listening to this video who doesn't know the Lord I pray that this word helps you to understand that there is an almighty loving Heavenly Father who loves you who gave his son Jesus Christ on the cross to die for your sins so that you could be saved and that he loves you and wants to save you and that if you want to receive Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life as your Savior all you have to do is in faith believing because words are not what save us what saves us is since the sincerity of our words and the faith and belief in our heart that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world who came to save man from their sins. All you have to do is go before him and simply say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you are the Savior sent by God to save me from my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for all I've ever done and I'm asking you to please forgive me of all my sins 
and I ask you to be the Lord of my life. And I will let you lead me and guide me, and I will serve you all the days of my life. Amen. That's all you have to do. If your heart is sincere and you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross to save you and you receive him, because we have to verbally say it to him, it is a confession and profession of faith, you will be saved. I love you in the love of the Lord. Again, like I said, I hope that this video blessed you. I hope it helps you, especially those of you who may be feeling a little shaky today, those smoldering wicks in the body of Christ. Know that God is with you, that God loves you, that God hears your cry, and that he will answer. Please, please, as I always say, feel free to share this video on your Facebook pages, on your timelines, on your Twitter, on your Instagram, and any and all um, social media that you may have that will receive this video, please feel absolutely free to share the video. That's what the video is for. The more people hear it, the better. Because this is to bless people and help them and to lead people to Christ and to strengthen those that are already in the body of Christ. So please feel free to share this video. I love you all in the Lord. I thank you so much for your attention, for listening, for bearing with me. And as always, until the next time that the Lord permits me to come to you and to bring you another precious nugget from the word of the Lord, this is Minister Lillian Cobos, Smoldering Wick Ministry. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful day.